Hello folks, I hope that you are just having just the best, best day today. Today we're going to be taking another look at Lee Brackett's Best of Collection. Uh, today we're going to look at the third short story in here called The Veil vale of Estelar. It's 30 pages long in my collection. It was published in 1944 for a magazine called Thrilling Wonder Stories. Thrilling Wonder Stories, 1944, Lee Brackett. And I just read it today. It's 30 pages in my collection. It took me about 45, 50 minutes for me to read. Uh, knocked it out today while I was at a cafe um, before watching Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, this is the third short story in my collection, and so it'll be the third one that I review for you. Um, and I have these slated in my schedule. After I finish Lawrence Whatever, I got two more of those. So this this will be five weeks from now, so I don't want to spend too much time talking about Godzilla vs. Kong because it'll been out for like five weeks by the time uh, that this video publishes, but I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it's my favorite movie I've seen so far in 2021. Um, and I've seen Ryan the Last Dragon. I've seen Nomadland. I, a couple weeks ago, I saw, uh, last week I saw The um, Courier with Benedict Cumberbatch, an independent spy film. But this movie's the best. I just loved it so much. Um, although, to be fair, I have a real soft spot in my heart for a surprise thing that they did in the movie that they didn't really have in the trailers uh, and um, I have a soft spot in my heart for that so uh, to be fair they did something I wasn't expecting and I loved it so, so and they played to my to my happy place um, so but that's neither here nor there um, I'll go ahead and leave you to it I loved it uh, but anyway I also read a, a Lee Brackett short story, a third, a third one in this collection, and a fourth one I've read by Lee Brackett. This uh, short story, The Veil of, a of the Stiller, is my uh, my fourth story I've read. It's going to be the first Lee Brackett story I've given an eight to. Um, and it's my favorite one so far, out of four. It's my top one out of four. Last week's uh, The Vanishing Venusians was my top out of three. This is my top out of four. So, and we'll see if this continues. Uh, but this is the first Lee Brackett story that I've read that I'm giving an eight to. Uh, it's just really strong. My typical, I typically give it a seven. There's, there's one where it's more like a six, six and a half. Um, and I round it up to seven because that's nice. Because I don't give halves in this. Uh, but so, let's go ahead and take a quick look at what, what this 30 page short story, uh, which is to be a little longer hour for me to knock it out, is trying to do. Um, and one of the things I really enjoy about this short story is that its point of view character is an antagonist, not a protagonist. And I enjoy that. Um, that's actually not that common in the pulp era. Uh, in the pulp era, your pulp heroes were people, big name people like Conan the Barbarian and Tarzan of, uh, of and uh, you know uh, John Carter of Mars, uh, and they were Solomon Cain. Uh, they are these big giant, bigger than life, big giant characters from the pulp era, and uh, you know they're they're from westerns, they're from adventures, they're from uh, you know detective pulps. Uh, and, and they are just these, these smart, these brainy, um, these giant, bigger-than-life characters that are the heroes of the pulps. And the pulp era is very much a, 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 a black and a white era of, of writing and reading. Um, and so I really enjoyed that your main character in this short story, 1944, uh, by Lee Brackett, who's a writer in the pulp era, um, is writing a short story where the protagonist is actually not, um, uh, where, where, where the point-of-view character is actually not a good person but somebody who's committed a lot of sins um, and uh, I enjoy that fact I enjoy it a lot and that's to Lee Brackett's credit I think she did a good job with uh, with choosing this story with setting this story uh, with detailing the story I think that the uh, the detailing and the world building that happens in this is very good um, it's another in her sword and planet set, set of sto stories it's very heavily influenced by John Carter and Mars um, it's set on Mars just like a lot of these things are during this time period. There are Venusians, there are Terrans, there are Martians that are all in there. Um, basically what's happening, um, our, our main point of view character, um, he's a gentleman named Goat, uh, Jay Goat, and uh, he um, is on Mars and he is going to Jupiter. Um, he is part of a, uh, of a mission of more than 500 families that are going on this ship that's going um, and heading over to Jupiter to help set up a colony as a part of the ongoing co colonial uh, growth of, of Jupiter. So they're going over to Jupiter to help set up a colony. 
And that's basically the core story. You're going to join along with him. Uh, he's on Mars at the time. He's taking some time. They're taking like uh, some time off uh, on Mars proper. So he is taking some time from the mission uh, and the expedition. Uh, and while he's there, he's reading people's thoughts, um, which seems like he's probably... At first, I thought he was a psychic, right? He is somebody who just learned psychic powers. He's got special abilities. And he has psionics. So he's literally like reading people's thoughts. The people's thoughts that he's interacting with. Uh, and I thought that was pretty cool. So you're getting kind of a, a different perspective on this. It's like uh, third person limited, but third person omniscient. Does that make sense? It's, it's third person omniscient because you're reading everybody else's thoughts, including your own, but it's a limited perspective, not just a traditional third person omniscient perspective. Um, so I think that Leap Bracket, again, does a really good job with that. So that, this is to her credit. Uh, and this is not something you would normally read like right right it's it's both limited because you're reading it from one person's perspective but he's psychic so you're also reading what what he is psychically communicating to others it's pretty cool and i like it a lot um another thing that's happening uh basically what's going to wind up happening um is, is that our, our point of view character is going to be confronted by somebody who thinks he's a vampire with crucifixes uh and he is going to stop that down shut that down pretty quickly uh, but we'll find out that our point of view character has done some dark things uh, in the first chapter of four. This thing is divided into four chapters. Um, he encounters a woman that reminds him of Missy, uh, a, a lost love of his uh, who has tragically passed, uh, whom we'll find out a lot more about as the story progresses. And uh, he, he encounters her. Um, she's married, uh, no, no kids, and they are both on the same ship that he's on, um, so they both wind up heading back to the ship so that they can head on over to Jupiter, and then they'll, they will continue. Uh, and that's, and then while on the ship, they're gonna learn a lot more, and the ship is chapter two. Mars is chapter one, the ship is chapter two. Um, and then I won't tell you where chapters three and four are because, surprise, surprise, you'll find out plot lines by that answer. <laughs> Uh, but there you are. Um, so there you are. It's part of an expedition. It's in Mars. It's in a sword and sandal. I like it. I think that Lee Brackett does a good job of this story. Um, and again, it's my favorite, although to be fair, it's only four short stories. And, and it's the first uh, story that I've read by Lee Brackett. I'm giving it an 8 to not a 7 to. So there you are. That is, you know, the veil of... A, now, it has a prelude where it tells you in the prelude that this story is the story of the destruction and the death of, of, of the veil, which is... A, apparently a hazard uh, for people that are navigating in, in, in outer space. And so it's going to tell you right up front that this is, a, this is telling you the story of how that was destroyed. So we'll find out what the veil is, who the veil is, what the veil does, where, where it is, uh, and all those sorts of things as a part of the story. It, that's where the, this name, the veil, of, of, uh, comes from. Um, so we'll find out what that is uh, and, and how it's ended as a part of the story. And so there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read it? What did you think of it? Did you agree or disagree with my take on it? I would be more than happy to engage with it further in the comments below. If you like this video, why not hit that subscribe button? Because there's going to be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, hey, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, right? And especially in this social media day and age, we're being pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me... Wow, that's humbling, and I appreciate it. Thanks again, and have a great day.